And now we have another speaker who has taken the time to muster up the courage to be with us tonight and share a little bit about her story. Our next speaker, along with those in attendance tonight, is a fellow platelet donor herself with a personal passion and commitment to our organization and to the platelet apheresis program. Barbara Whitinger, known to those of her that are near and dear to her as BJ, is an occupational health nurse for Arabelle Ridge and an outstanding advocate and chairperson for their on-site mobile program. I have had the privilege to work with BJ for a couple of years now, and she consistently amazes me with her recruiting and commitment of new and existing donors at her blood drives and always meeting or exceeding my projection. I first met BJ at our G Street facility to interview her for her reigning donor of the month of May of 2008. I'll never forget her response when I asked her, what motivates you to donate? She replied, I am mo motivated by a personal drive and commitment for my community. I enjoy my housing family, and they make the experience enjoyable. She went on to say, some women enjoy getting their nails done for girl talk and relaxation. I enjoy my time donating and visiting with all my housing friends. You go, girl. Please help me welcome B.J. Whitinger our top-ranking female platelet donor with 320 platelet donations. Thanks, Tracy. I'm just going to tell you a quick story um, why I'm a platelet donor, but more importantly, why I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, I have been a registered nurse for over 33 years. As an old ICU and ER nurse, um, when a patient needed blood, you know, the doctor would say, give Mr. Jones four units of packed cells, and it was pretty easy. I'd call down to the lab and say, Mr. Jones needs four units of packed cells, and pretty soon they'd appear, and I'd transfuse them. And I didn't think too much about the donor who took the time to donate that blood. But about 10 years ago, my... Um, frame of reference, so to speak, kind of changed because it was my family members that needed the blood and they especially needed platelets. My younger brother Richard developed a, a disease called DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. I'll say that quickly three times. Um, <laughs> basically, it's a platelet disorder and at first it causes excessive clotting and that kind of clogs up all the small um, blood vessels and so that can cause organ, organ failure and death, um, but then it causes bleeding because all the platelets and clotting factors are depleted. So it can be too much or it can be not enough, and it's, it's very scary. But we had no idea that Richard had the disease, but we quickly found out when he had a relatively minor injury to his chest while he was moving some furniture. The other guy, they were moving upstairs. The other guy um, dropped his end of the couch, and Richard kind of fell and just hit the, the guardrail on the stairs. We didn't think too much about it, but that night he woke up his identical twin brother, Ronald, and told him that he couldn't breathe and he thought he was going to die, so call an ambulance. Ronald did, and by the time they got Richard to the hospital, he had over four quarts of blood in his lung. So, of course, that was pressing on his heart, pressing on his trachea, and he, he did almost die. Um, they immediately put in four chest tubes to drain the blood so that he could breathe, but the bleeding continued unabated. He obviously needed a high le higher level of care, so he was transferred by helicopter to a major medical center in Phoenix, close to where they live. They called us to say he was in critical condition and that we really should get there as soon as possible. Over the next six weeks, he had numerous surgeries, procedures, and over 113 transfusions. The majority were platelets. He did survive, and he came back to Bakersfield to heal. I made the commitment then to replace all the platelets that he had used. Richard then developed the chronic form of DIC, and we never knew when he was going to need blood and platelets. A normal platelet count for him was five to 7,000, and all of us that donate know that that's not very much, um, normal being 140 on the low end. So any minor injury could mean a two- or three-week hospitalization, many, many transfusions, or it could mean that he could die. I remember one time he bit his tongue, something we've all done, but we couldn't get the bleeding to stop, so we had to go to the emergency room. 
Um, I can't tell you the helpless feeling it was to watch him bleed. The ER nurse actually gave him a trash can to bleed into because he was bleeding so much. And they asked him if he could wait out in the car because, I'm not kidding, because all the bleeding was kind of um, stressful for the other patients and for the staff. But the most helpless feeling was when the doctor said, there aren't any platelets available. We're hoping that we can have some by tomorrow. He was finally admitted. He needed an emergency transfusion of four units of blood and the platelets that they finally got for him. And he needed 10 units of platelets a day for the next two weeks. I continued to donate, still trying to replace all the units that he used. There are many such instances over the years, and eventually due to the damage to his organs, he went into liver and kidney failure and died in July of 05 at the age of 41. As awful as this was, and as much as I still miss him today, if it not have been for all of you faithful platelet donors, he would not have lived as long as he did. So I truly thank you. I continue to donate. No one missed Richard more than his twin brother, but our grief had to be put on hold because just a month later, Ronald was diagnosed with head and neck cancer. Over the next year, due to chemo and radiation, he too required many platelets and occasional blood transfusions. We thought his cancer was gone after a CT scan in June of 06 revealed no sign of a tumor. We rejoiced at the news and anticipated a long and healthy life for him. Then one night in October of that year, my parents called me and said, Ronald's bleeding out of his mouth and we don't know why, we don't know where it's coming from, we can't see where it's coming from. So we went back to the ER and a CT scan revealed a tumor, a new tumor that had eaten through his um, artery and part of his jaw. It was a very aggressive and very rare cancer, totally different than his original cancer that we just thought he was um, free of. Again, chemo and radiation and surgeries and massive bleeding any time the tumor would spread into a new vein or artery meant he needed many, many units of blood and transfusion quite often. Ronald continued to fight valiantly, but cancer eventually won, and he died in 2007, a little after midnight on his 44th birthday. Again, as terrible as it was and as much as I miss him every day, if not for you faithful platelet donors, our family would not have had that extra time with him. So please remember the next time the phone rings and Carlina's sweet, quiet voice is on the other end saying, is there any way you can come in and donate? There is a parent or a grandparent or a friend or brother or sister grateful for another day or a month or week or year with their loved one. So that's why I donate and why I'm so very grateful to each one of you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. God bless you all, and I'll see you at Hatchin.